The Headhunters, The Mongrel Mob, Hell's Angels and Highway 61. They are just some of the homegrown gangs who've ruled the roost in Aotearoa for decades. But investigative reporter Jared Savage argues Australian imports like the Mongols and Comancheros have brought a slicker, more professional edge and with it more drugs, shootings and corruption. In his new book, Gangster's Paradise, Jared puts the stark growth in organised crime down to the arrival of thousands of 501 deportees from Australia. It's pretty bleak news, so is there a way to turn it around? Oh, please welcome Jared Savage, author of the book, welcome. Your last book was a huge success. Has much changed in the three years since then? Yeah, so the, the first book was about the evolution of organised crime in, in New Zealand over the past 20 years. Um, this one is more about the escalation that we've seen since then. Um, we're seeing record-breaking drug seizures, um, a lot more overt sort of violence between gangs, um, tit-for-tat drive-by shootings, arsons, um, that sort of thing, which we've seen in Auckland and around the country. And as well, a bit of, you know, there's an increasing sort of insidious corruption as well within our ports and our airports as you know, gangs and other organised crime groups try and get drugs into the country. Which is all pretty spicy stuff <laughs> and it makes for great news headlines. But do New Zealanders actually need to be worried? I think, like, day to day, the general public are not going to be targeted by, you know, by a gang or by gang members. But I guess the it's much more of an underworld sort of thing, which has kind of gone under the radar for, for many years. But I guess... With this escalation, what's kind of happened is, is that there's a risk of getting caught in the crossfire, I suppose. Mm. Um, one example, um, down in Tauranga, where I'm from, there was a turf war between um, one of the new Australian gangs, the Mongols, who had come into town against the Mongol mob, a more established group, and um, that led to 96 rounds being fired into um, a Mongol mob leader's house. Uh, you know, there were kids inside. Um, anything could have happened. Yeah. yeah. Um, of the 2,501 deportees from Australia... Have they all gone into gangs, or have they found other things to do? Is that is that the problem? There's so w among the five ones who have come back, there's a smaller subset who are established senior um, gang members from Australia. Those are the ones that I I, I would say are the influential uh, members of that group. Um, the problem with uh, for the other five ones is that you know, they've come over here, no friends, no family, no job. Um, of course, that leads to an increase in recruitment for to to motorcycle gangs. Mm. And what's the difference? Like, you talk about the Mongols versus the mongrel mob. What are the kind of key differences that Australians are bringing in here? Well, they've come over with very established international organised crime links, so it's, it's not just um, them turning up. They've got a vast network around the world, um, access to, to drugs mainly, and so we've seen that um, very clearly much larger importations of drugs in the last few years. 20 years ago, a kilogram of meth was a big deal for the police. Um, now we're talking five, six, seven hundred kilograms coming in. The, the record gets broken every other month at the moment. So they've got those connections. They're sort of um, bringing... They're quite savvy in terms of, you know, their communications, um, encrypted comms between one another. Um, makes it harder for the police to target them. But, of course, what's that done with, with the established groups that are here is that they've upped their game now as well. So uh, uh, that, that's the escalation as well. Mm. well I mean, what do you do about it? I mean, you'd see political party promises. Um, National wants to remove gang patches, stop them associating together in public places. Is that going to help? Um, what's interesting is that all the political parties have come out with a tough-on-crime, tough-on-gang sort of mantra... Um, and I do think we need more enforcement. I think um, we've got ve we're very good at sort of targeting the organised crime level, the upper echelon. It's probably the more disorganised crime that probably needs to be targeted. Yeah. Um, you know, your, your gang convoys and your sort of um, brawls and things like that. that is a, that's a resourcing issue for the police. Um, the bigger... Th if you look about it, if, if gangs are eliminated completely in a, in a utopian world, there's still going to be the problem of... Uh, young men from impoverished backgrounds that need something to fill their lives, a void in their lives, whether it's a... In the old days, that would have been sports sports teams, church groups. More complicated and a harder fix is what you're saying, That's I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I will say you're not as funny as the top twins. <laughs> <laughs> Great work on the book, though, Jared. It's Are called... you a night cleaner, Jared? <laughs> Gangster's Paradise is the book. It's on sale now, and please thank Jared Savage. <laughs>